husband, Dave Hill Jr., wanted to start an ambulance company. He had thought about other businesses, hot dog stand, and that's all about location. And then he talked about a laundromat. Well, you have to be a mechanic. Wasn't Dave. So um, he was talking to one of his friends who was working part time for Daly's Ambulance down in Markham. Dave uh, called John Daly and went down to see him. And John said, Sure, I'll help you get started. You're not going to be my competitor. You're up in Bellwood. First, he had to buy an ambulance, and he found one up in uh, Palatine, a used ambulance. And he went to the bank, and nobody would lend him money to start an ambulance business. So uh, he uh, got $1,000 from uh, the bank for a home equity loan. So that was our capital. He bought the ambulance, brought it home, and we told his folks, and his mother's comment was, well, you can always use the sheets. So that was our send off from my mother-in-law. Sat at the kitchen table, wrote down names. What are we going to call this business? Certainly not Dave's or Hill's or anything else like that. So we kept going back to the name Superior. So we decided on Superior Ambulance Service. That was our name. And we were going to be the very best, the Superior. Of course, later on, we were already established running out of our house in Bellwood and uh, doing calls that we were being really directed out of Dupa out of Cook County into DuPage County by the uh, sheriff's office because in the middle of the night, the ambulances that were owned by the funeral homes, the funeral directors weren't happy about getting up in the middle of the night to do calls, especially out on the street when it really wasn't their business. So um, the sheriff's office started calling us and we were answering calls all the way from at 53 and north from Bellwood. Without any traffic, uh, that was when DuPage was in its infancy, two lane highways, a lot of farms. So we could make good time out there. And our business was growing because we were efficient, fast, and could do the, the service. So anyway, that's how we started out moving into DuPage County and later on decided that that's where our ambulance service should be located. They've bought a building on York and North there next to what is now Hamburger Heaven. The ambulance was loaded, located in DuPage County, but our office at that point was still in Bellwood. And eventually we moved to Elmhurst and put the uh, office in the basement of our home in Elmhurst. When we started the business, we had three kids. The youngest was six months old. The other two were toddlers. So there were these little kids running around all the time and they had to learn to be quiet when the phone rang. So that was uh, really interesting how to keep them quiet. They, we had our home in Bellwood had bedrooms upstairs. So the kids were located up there in the back bedroom of the main part of the house uh, was used as an office. We had two, a desk in there, two separate phones, because it was cheaper to get two separate phones than a button phone, and then two typewriters. What is a button phone? Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> a phone that you can have more than one line on. Uh -huh. So they would have buttons on it that reflected the uh, lines. So it was cheaper to get two separate phones than a phone phone. We had all part-time help. Dave had run a, a, an ad in uh, the local paper, and he put up notices around uh, the village. Uh, and put one up over in Maywood at the Maywood uh, Lutheran Seminary there. And we drew uh, people who were interested in being working on an ambulance. We had an auto mechanic, a taxi cab driver, a couple of men who worked over at the American Can Company in Maywood. And then uh, uh, Ray Salem was a student at the Lutheran Seminary. And so uh, it was a variety. 
And Ray would come over there and, and sit at the house uh, in the afternoon and uh, study, so he was available for a call. The others, uh, we would just call, and David would run out of the house with the ambulance, pick him up, and, be, and uh, they'd go on the call. And then when they'd get to the hospital, in the emergency room, they would pick, go to the pay phone, put a coin in, let the phone ring once, and that told me they were at the hospital. So I didn't have to jump over to the, uh, uh, the uh, phone. Or, and then when they left, they did the same thing. They put a coin in, let, let the phone ring twice, and then I knew that they were available. And this was especially valuable in the middle of the night, so I didn't have to get out of bed. Because we were doing most of the emergency work around DuPage County. Like I said, the only other the other ambulances were owned by funeral homes. They were the same vehicle that was used as a hearse. So you, if you could put a a casket in there, you could put a stretcher in it. That's why the funeral homes had these. Uh, because they had the vehicle, so they were the ambulance providers. We had an, uh, an American Red Cross first aid uh, instructor, a doctor, come out and teach. And he, we uh, furnished the American first aid books to the employees. Oh, that's what we had. That was the Bible of the day, American Red Cross. Now you look at it and it looks like a paper leaf, you know, next to what our, our employees have now. But that was it. So in the ambulance, they had oxygen and the thing, they could do splintering and different primary things, but uh, no real equipment. I mean, when you look at the ambulances today, uh, you can't envision the primary care that we gave at that time. In the beginning, to start the business, we had to get registration from the state of Illinois and be registered. And then we had to get a business license from the uh, village of Bellwood so we could operate a business out of our home. The, the big Cadillac that we had, the ambulance, didn't fit in our garage. So Dave and his dad put a little addition on so he, they could put the ambulance in there if we had to do any work on it. We operated out of the house in Bellwood in the beginning and all of our uh, holidays were spent there uh, with the family around the table because it would be either Dave or I on the phone. We didn't trust anybody else in the beginning. So for the first almost five years, we didn't go out of the house together. So until we felt like we had somebody who we could trust because it wasn't only the phones and the dispatching, it was also the kids. So the first time we were able to go out for dinner, uh, we were hardly seated in the restaurant and a wait waitress comes up and tells Dave he has a call. Now this is before mobile phones, radios, all that. So Dave went to the phone and here the gal who was babysitting and dispatching for us was complaining about the kids were fighting. So it was not a pleasant outing. The company was one ambulance in the beginning. So we bought the sheets and the, uh, the linens, the top blankets, everything through Montgomery Ward catalog. I have to remember, I didn't go out of the house. I would order, I would, Sears and Montgomery Wards, they were the, they, that was my shopping. And I would order the stuff for them and then I'd iron the sheets. And uh, they would, you know, regular bed sheets, full size bed, and fold them over and everything. And the kids, of course, remember that. We had a ringer washer in the basement. And I hung the laundry in the basement in the winter and, uh, and outside in the summer with the clothesline, no dryer. I never thought beyond the next day. All I wanted to do was help my husband be successful. And uh, I didn't think of it as down the road. I think Dave did, and that's when he decided that he would sell it to my son. I was never really, you know, at that time women were in the background. 
you, you, you never saw a woman working on an ambulance, let alone uh, being a business owner. So uh, it, was, it was a different time. You can see that today, can't you? What was that like, though? I accepted it because that's the, when everything is the same, you don't feel discriminated against, you know. But when somebody else is doing something and you, you can't because you're a woman, then you say, that's wrong. But today, everything is the same. Women run corporations and uh, run businesses. And it's a big, it's a, well, it's a long, long way from when we started. In the beginning, uh, we decided that our men should look very professional. Now you have to remember, it was men. So Dave bought them all jackets and caps, the well hats that the like the livery men wore, and ties. They were all blue ties. So the fellows had their own white shirts and blue slacks, and then they had the blue jacket that we we get furnished and the hat and the tie. Well, the hats didn't last very long. They got in the way. And it wasn't too long that we were able to switch from regular foreign hand ties to snap-off ties because the, the other was a strangulation fear. That was the start of the uniform. And the white shirt and tie lasted forever until about a year and a half ago when the employees got together and cornered my son and he agreed, yes, they could wear t-shirts instead. And that was the end of the white shirt and tie. The National Registry was formed uh, during uh, the war in Vietnam. Rocco Morano got these doctors from all over the country and the largest ambulance services together and they formed the National Registry. What happened is if you were in Vietnam, you would get better medical care than you could anywhere else in this country because they had all, they had the, uh, the first aid, they had elevated it, they had everything. So then the uh, the National Registry was formed to make it uniform code that all ambulance personnel were trained in the same manner. And that's how that began. Well, Davey took it over while we only had uh, 10 ambulances and he knew immediately that he could make it grow. And so that was his aspiration was to make it grow. And I can't even tell you how many ambulances we have today because he did what he said he wanted to do. Northwestern was looking for an ambulance service to be there when they had their football games. So Mary Franco went down and talked to them. And Mary, as you know, is one of the top salesmen in the industry. So uh, she came back and she said, well, I told them that we would paint the ambulance their colors. So that was the beginning of different colored ambulances. That one came out purple, Northwestern colors. And it wasn't much later than that. I think it started out with the white socks. They asked us to provide ambulances there for them. And we have two ambulances, one inside uh, and one outside there at the uh, Sox Park, uh, and that was Jerry Reinstar. So then Jerry also was involved with the Bulls. So he was telling Rocky about having the animal service and it might be a good idea for Rocky because you, you know, you can't keep calling the Chicago Fire Department. So we ended up at the United Center. So you'll always see two ambulances there, one inside and one out. And they're there for every activity that they have concerts, everything. You see our people there. I've seen them go on the ice during the hockey game and pick up a player. I've also seen them 
out at the Bears games. We service the Bears, but not their fans. We do all the activities in Chicago. The marathon, I guess everybody in the company is invited to work on that day. And there are bicycles and golf carts and uh, first aid stations. And it's a long day, but I guess it's quite uh, fun. I've witnessed a lot. I think that the employees of Superior are the finest in the industry. We are forever getting compliments on our employees, whether you're from Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana, you're all part of it. But when you have a reputation that's as stellar as ours, that you should be the, the leader in the industry, that's what's happening. Anybody who is here and wears a uniform should be very proud. We just have wonderful people, and I'm proud of every one of them. You now you can meet them anywhere. They're gentlemen and ladies. How many letters we get and comments, especially the elderly, who are, have been around the block and understand good care. You're part of it if you're here. It's a... I'm proud to be part of this organization. I'm proud of the legacy. And I'm proud of what my son has done to make it grow, have uh, continuity of all of it.